Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day. We have some very, very, very interesting and also some very, very weird news and that is not an understatement to start things off. According to reports by FX Street and other publications, SBI CEO by the name of Yoshitaka Katao said that XRP's market cap will easily overtake that of Bitcoin's by the end of 2019. Due to XRP being adopted on a global scale for payments and settlement transactions, Ripple has plans in place to achieve its internet of value and allow its customers across the world to be part of a global ecosystem known as RippleNet. R3, which we've been talking about multiple times over the last like two or three weeks, they've been in the news constantly. Another enterprise blockchain software firm is leveraging XRP and XRP's ledger technology to facilitate corporate settlements on the Corda network if you were here for yesterday's video we had news that um uh even just from yesterday that the r3 corda network is going to apparently have another 50 banks on top of it who are going to be using xrp i don't know the exact number at this point but um it's very interesting the amount of speed i i, I kind of want to say that we're getting this news that more and more places are going to be using like actually using xrp because they're kind of all connected together 2018 was a very interesting year where we saw all of these connections kind of being made i think a lot of people missed them i think a lot of people uh didn't really connect the dots but it was quite certain especially if you've been paying attention at all to sbi uh which is one of the largest banks in japan they announced their support for Ripple, the company, around 2017, they announced at the end of 2017 that they were going to be creating their own cryptocurrency exchange that was going to uh, use XRP as the main asset. And then they announced that they, uh, as a bank themselves, would be partnering up with other banks who would then also be using XRP. And the CEO of SBI also announced as well that they would that they would be targeting other banks within Japan to also use XRP and XRapid. So whatever's going on is going to be absolutely intense as we continue through this year. SBI's Mr. Katao shares the same dreams, but with respect to Japan and improving its payments industry, yeah, this is just what I was talking about. He says he wants to make Japan pretty much run on XRP. He said, because XRP is already beginning to become international, XRapid will be used for fund transfers in 2019. By increasing the so-called XRP's plastic use, we anticipate that Ripple's market cap will easily exceed the market cap of Bitcoin, end quote. Furthermore, Mr. Katao added that they will be using R3's Corda and XRP in turn to process international remittances. He continued by saying, you can use R3's Corda for international remittance, but Corda Settler and XRP use this because they have high affinity. That's why the swift partnership with R3 Corda is good news that brings bright materials to the market. What I emphasize is to combine R3 and Ripple to make XRP thoroughly, practically usable. Once again, paying attention. I don't know if you were, once again, all here for this. I'm pretty sure you may have seen when it happened a couple of weeks ago. We had indication that the people from Swift, uh, I can't re remember exactly what event they were um, not performing, uh, attending uh, at the time. But this is why the price of XRP went up, because the people from Swift announced that they were going to be using the cordless settler, which uses XRP. And this is why, uh, I guess, speculation is still abound. Uh, that Swift, ins I mean, at, th at this point, <laughs> I have to say allegedly because no one knows for certain, uh, but the idea is, is that Swift in some sort of way allegedly could potentially already be in the process of thinking about starting to use XRP as they have announced that they're going to be using the Corda Settler, which also then gets us into another situation. Uh, in 2017, for a little uh, bit of history for those who weren't here, XRP was... I think it was under one cent. I think it was like a fourth of a cent or something like that. And then at some, we, we were getting tons and tons of good news and it did nothing to the price. The price continued going sideways. And then I think about a two, three week period, it went from less than one cent to I think around 50 cents and then to a dollar and then it hit the $3.60. That was the maximum that it ever hit. But uh, for some reason, XRP's price doesn't really react uh the same way other coins do it kind of like it's like a bubbling effect like as like as if you like boiling water and it takes a long time for it to kind of happen because now we more or less have confirmation that many banks around the world are going to be using xrp uh if any other coin in my personal humble opinion if we had any other in, uh, indication that other banks or institutions would be using other coins exclusively or specifically i think their prices would have risen 
for some reason, it just does not um, happen that well with XRP. It says SBI has strategically placed itself at the center of the cryptocurrency revolution by partnering with important leaders in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And this involves Ripple, R3, and other companies that are all based around the world. Tying into this as well, uh, I don't think, once again, that it's random. That If you've been listening the past... It has to at least be eight, nine weeks now. And I, I, I think the timing is once again all there because of life and what have you. Uh, that we've had so many banks who have never used Swift, don't like Swift, or have been not knocked out of like the world payment system, but they're, they, they, you know, they just weren't really a part of it. Uh, that they've all announced that they're also joining RippleNet and a lot of people say or tend to um as the saying go flap their gums they say well they're all using ripple net and they're all probably using x current uh you'd be heavily mistaken if you think that over 200 banks who have signed up with ripple not even not, not even the the other banks who are going to be using corda uh that everyone else who has signed up with ripple is just planning on using x current and not the xrp token uh, pay attention to all those large transfers that are happening on the XRP ledger that we may not see on cryptocurrency exchanges, but when we see, you know, 75 million XRP being passed around and people are buying these huge amounts, they are happening for a reason. I just uh, thought this was kind of it and cool and interesting because uh, even for like major other cryptocurrencies, like there aren't many people outside of the cryptocurrency space who are like really for cryptocurrencies like there are very few people maybe like jack dorsey but even then it's not like as strong like there's not any one celebrity or like someone like mega financial powerhouse who's really out there exclusively for bitcoin there's no one out there who's like yeah litecoin is going to be the thing litecoin is going to take over everything there's no one really there for for stellar but the fact that the ceo of sbi uh has been so vocal over the last year and a half especially on twitter talking about this like it's imagine the owner of a bank in imagine the the, the 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 head of the bank in i can't even think of a country because ripple actually has partnered with all these countries i was going to say india but we know they the whole situation with ripple in india imagine for you know some other bank ceo from some other major country announcing you know, yeah, we're, you know, Litecoin is going to be integrated into everything. Litecoin is going to be used by all the other banks. We're going to be using Litecoin. We're starting in a cryptocurrency exchange is just going to be using Litecoin. That would be very significant. And now we have all this stuff with like everyone's focusing on XRP. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of, and I tell you this because it's my own opinion. This is kind of how I feel about the entire thing. Um, I feel like because they are the big three that they're getting the most attention. Um, all the attention right now is focused on XRP ethereum and on bitcoin these are kind of the names in the cryptocurrency space i think eventually more will emerge you know we'll, we'll eventually have other coins that people will love and we'll have the new google and the new amazon but i think at the moment these are the most um recognizable names at least no i'm not even to me like these are you can ask people on the street like who know about who may, maybe not even know about crypto like if they know what what ripple is and they'll definitely know maybe not ethereum so much but they'll also definitely know bitcoin anyway I thought I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's not impossible. XRP did take over Bitcoin once before. I didn't show it on Coin Market Cap, but if you go by other uh, normal metrics, XRP did take over Bitcoin once before. Uh, let's see if it can do it again and kind of uh, sustain it and even surpass where it was. Yeah, let's move on. Next up. A private bank in Liechtenstein has established a cryptocurrency trading platform for institutional investors. Balzer's bank based bank Frick will offer the service through its new subsidiary DLT Markets AG. According to a statement released by the bank two days ago, DLT Markets will provide its customers with the infrastructural access to buy and sell digital assets from several exchanges. The company has said this allows investors to trade and manage digital tokens in a regulated environment as they are used to form the traditional securities businesses. The units will also administer order data and perform risk and position management processes as part of efforts to book assets and payments securely. At the time, Bank Frick will provide custodial services to institutional investors trading cryptocurrency who will have to comply with Know your customer and anti-money laundering requirements. That breeze over. Uh, just talking about it. I think it's just Liechtenstein and Switzerland. They keep um, 
not worming their way, but they, they, they constantly have information about banks who are offering cryptocurrency either to institutional investors, which pretty much just means rich people. And also just like the general services, like there was a, something that I, that came out a couple of months ago, it was on YouTube and they were showing, uh, like not, not, not the crypto Valley in Switzerland, but it was like how many stores and places accepted cryptocurrencies and like how many lawyers offices and accountants were accepting it. And it, it, it seems to be like thriving, but I mean, these are also these, these are very wealthy countries. So I assume that they know what's going on, but, uh, I just, you know, when, when, whenever a bank offers cryptocurrency trading, it's something to kind of, uh, keep your eye on because we've seen so much backlash from banks and now so many of them are constantly opening up cryptocurrency trading platforms. I'll bait for rich people, but you still understand that they understand that there is money to be made. And this is why they're opening up all these, uh, little things for their clients. This is something that I wholeheartedly agree with. The race for the launch of a Bitcoin ETF has been an onerous one. Since the first proposal was plopped on the desk of American regulators, hopefuls and investors at large have hoped that a crypto-linked ETF would make it through the hoops. While much of this anticipation has been contained to America, per a report from the Korea Herald, many in South Korea are waiting on such vehicles too. Citing an unnamed official at the Korea Exchange, the sole security exchange operator in the Asian powerhouse, the outlet claimed that South Koreans are waiting on a verdict from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. He or she noted that as America has become a front runner and really and crypto backed investment products, becoming the foremost market for regulated futures, the CBOE and CME, it will be important to watch what America entitles entities ent entitles American entitles American entities decide to do with the cryptocurrency space, especially in terms of consumer and institutional focused funds. The Korea Exchange representatives went on to note that in their eyes, a solid index like ones pertaining to Bitcoin and Ethereum recently launched by the New York based Nasdaq is required for the launch of such ETFs, they said. And of NDC's role when they are commercialized and integrated into the market is being discussed expansively at the KRX because it would eventually concern investor protection issues. Uh, this is something that I, I feared and something that I, I mean, I, I should have seen this coming and it was kind of logical. I told you all in 2018, one of the things that had kind of annoyed me the most about the cryptocurrency space was that for some reason we had, and it wasn't even like it was just one or two, it was like 15 to 25 different countries around the world who were talking about that they were, sorry, I'm talking too fast, who were talking about that they were going to give uh, their citizens cryptocurrency regulation and they were talking about how this was going to happen, when this was going to happen, and when, you know, they, they gave specific dates and that's the part that really bothers me the most because if you're going to give a specific date for something, just do it. Uh, and we had countries talking about that they would give regulations in March and then in April. And then they said in like July, August, and then that became October. And then it became December and we heard nothing. And I mentioned before that I was afraid that the other countries around the world were desperately waiting to see what the US SEC was doing. Part of my uh, 2.0 fear comes down to the fact that I hope that if other countries are waiting to see what the US SEC is going to do, that they may try to one up them and not try to match them. Because if the US SEC decides to take their time uh, when it comes to a, a, especially a physical Bitcoin ETF, and they decide, you know, we, we don't want one right now, it's just not that, you know, the time we can't have one of these, that might be a problem. If they do uh, allow one to go through and it's not a physically held Bitcoin ETF and other countries start mimicking them thinking that a physically held Bitcoin ETF is just too risky, that'll also pose a problem. On the other side of it, I hope desperately that there's at least one, like, no, not even one, like five countries who are waiting for what the US has to say about anything that comes with crypto regulation. And these other countries say, okay, this is what they did. Let's go one step ahead of them and let's be better. And let's make sure that we lower taxes and let's make sure that we try to get these people into our countries. Uh, I've never been to South Korea, but um, I'm a bit annoyed that the, how do I say this? The rulers, the, 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 the financial people making the decisions in their country uh, know that they're manipulating the market and they, I mean, they probably just don't even care. 
uh, because they announced in 2017 that they were going to ban crypto. And then we realized someone said in South Korea that, that you know you can't legally ban it. And then they said, OK, by the summer of 2018, we were going to give regulations because uh, for those who weren't here in 2017, South Korea and Japan were dominating the market. And I don't mean like, you know, they were pushing a couple extra bucks. They had something called the kimchi premium in South Korea. We're pretty much when Bitcoin was around ten thousand dollars for the rest of the world, it was like thirteen, fourteen thousand in South Korea. They were gobbling it up as much as possible from all their local cryptocurrency exchanges. They were controlling the entirety of the market. Uh, it, it even got to the point, like I mentioned earlier over here, where XRP actually took over the price of uh, of uh, the 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 market cap of Bitcoin. That was because of South Korea and Japan, they were buying up so much XRP, especially people in Japan, that it actually caused the people from CoinMarketCap, and this is why I don't use them. They actually removed, I believe it was the some some Asian uh, cryptocurrency exchanges from the actual uh, um, mathematical calculation of how much um, XRP's price sh was at that time. So we had a situation where XRP's price was going up like this, and they removed, randomly, they didn't tell anyone as well, they removed the, the Asian exchanges and xrp's price slammed down immediately and they gave no reason for it and they never are probably going to give a reason for it i can only assume it's because they probably hold an enormous amount of bitcoin they did the math and they realized that something uh was wrong with their perfect universe uh just to keep in mind i am not exclusively for any one cryptocurrency so if you hear me bad mouthing bitcoin you hear me bad mouthing xrp hear me bad mouthing anything uh it's just kind of how the channel is i try to stay as centered as possible as possible you know i do make mistakes no one is perfect uh but this you know i do focus on a couple of coins especially like the the big three as they call them because it, in my eyes these coins are probably going to be the winners at least for the short term that is two to five year period anyway to get back on track um we had a lot of we had two uh, to be fair the, the the only two that really matter uh, forgive me uh from the new york stock exchange arca and the cboe they both resubmitted their bitcoin etf proposals uh with the 45 day countdown starting about a couple days ago uh if we and i'm hoping hoping that the timing is right i think this is maybe why they both submitted them around you know two days apart because within 45 days fingers crossed we should have um, backed some type of information about when backed is going to launch. The NASDAQ should have launched their own crypto thing as well. And Fidelity should have also launched their thing as well in March like they announced. So 45 days from now, we should have... Um, sorry, that was my mic. We should have, uh, hopefully, better custody solutions like the SEC has been asking for. And with these new custody solutions from major names in the financial world, uh, this could hopefully, 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 potentially green light an ETF. And I think that's when the fireworks are going to really start to go off. Because when the SEC finally does announce that they're allowing an ETF, many other countries around the world are also going to announce it. And I think a lot of people don't really understand um, how big this is going to get and how fast. You know, we we focus a lot on news from the United States. I know a lot of people out there are also not just exclusively in the United States. We have a lot of people from Africa, a lot of people from South America, a lot of people from Europe, Asia, like all over the entire world. Uh, but, you know, normal news, when we focus on finance, everyone seems to focus and hone on the United States because, the you know, they are the economic powerhouse of the entire world, what have you. But what's going to end up happening is that a lot of, a lot of other countries, I'm sure, are slowly and or rapidly realizing exactly what's happening in the cryptocurrency space. When you have major names getting into the cryptocurrency space, you know, digital tokens that were created for five years ago, you, you you understand that something as big is happening behind the scenes. So I think when the US finally allows one, we're going to probably have hundreds within the next like year after that one ends up being launched. And when we have a whole bunch of physical Bitcoin ETFs around the world, I try to, I can't say for sure the number and I can't say when. I can't even uh, logically say if it's, you know, all speculation, but Bitcoin's price is going to completely lose its mind when we have hundreds of Bitcoin ETFs, physical Bitcoin ETFs around the world. Uh, so let's hope this is this may be once again why they are. I have my own theories when it comes to things like this. It's we if you've watched documentaries, if you've watched the news, you know that some of these people are usually they're in the pockets of like major banks. And I've always said before that I'm pretty sure that major banks are starting their own mining operations because we, we, we've seen banks before listed on other websites for people who are creating these new like 
uh, mega mining factories. I'm pretty sure they're all connected and related. Everything has to take its time in order to be launched so that banks can acquire more Bitcoin and, and you know, set up their mining operations before other people get in. I don't know. I have my own, I have my own uh, things that kind of flow through my head, but uh, it's it, it's all tied and connected to me. I mean, if normal finance is connected, you'd better believe that the richest people in the entire world are all discussing how they plan on becoming richer from cryptocurrencies. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, earlier this week, the IOTA Foundation announced the most recent partnership with Liverpool-based co-foundry known as Nova. The partnership will work towards increasing the number of startups that successfully utilize the next generation of distributed ledger technology. Startups can apply for the program via the Nova website. Once accepted, successful teams will have access to funding and monitoring monitorship geared towards developing innovative new business models using IDO technology. With the support of both organizations, startups will have a foundation to realize their visions of implementing DLT to solve real-life problems. Entrepreneurs will also have access to IOTA's test lab to build and test their solutions on the Tangle. David Son Stable, co-founder and co-chair at IOTA, explained how the partnership will help transform ideas into sustainable business models. He said the Tangle network out overcomes many of the limitations and inefficiencies of blockchain technology and as such has huge potential to transform machine to machine transactions that are at the core of the internet of things this is yet again another partnership by the iota people iota foundation if you will uh we have a lot of news about them constantly partnering with people but it always comes down to them talking about the using the iota tango which i mean to be fair isn't a bad thing but i wish that we had some type of news about the uh iota token being actually used it's always about the tangle that's not to say that somewhere down the line uh some of these companies won't be using the iota token but 99.9 .9 of the time i don't think we've had any major institutions and or companies fully outright say that they plan on using the iota token however it does set up iota to be another um, 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 um like platform kind of like kind of kind of like neo and ethereum and stuff like that where people are using their uh tangle chain tangle uh to be able to build stuff on top of them which makes the platform you know a uh, uh, you know worth a bit more because it has a lot of things built on top of it but it would help uh, if they had more people using their token just thought i'd you know talk about another iota partner they have like once a week iota has a new partner it just they always come down to people using their tangle yeah let's move on in some of these, sorry if you hit the typing in the back, uh, some of the weirdest news that you're going to hear today. Bloomberg thinks that the recent Bitcoin price rally was caused by the JP Morgan coin. Bloomberg, the well-known financial media outlet, has affirmed that the surge in price of Bitcoin that we all saw just a couple days ago when it went from 3200 to 3900 was caused by the news of the JP Morgan coin. Uh, because it's currently in development. This has prompted the crypto community to affirm that Bloomberg could not be more wrong. At the time that JP Morgan coin was announced, the crypto market was actually down by 0.6%. However, some days after it happened, the crypto market, especially Bitcoin, started to go up again as slightly above the $4,000 mark. On Twitter, Bloomberg called it a delayed boost from the announcement. However, this ignores several things which are happening right now in the market. For instance, the Lightning Network pr products are getting stronger every day. All that Bloomberg saw was that JP Morgan token, which is called Matty Greenspan, so and so and so. Uh, this is this is this is a very deep conversation, and I don't know how far I'm going to go, at least in this video. Uh, part of my, and I mean. Mm, if there's another word for anger, I can't figure it out right now. I want to say, I think hypocrisy could be a, a very good word. My anger with the hypocrisy of the cryptocurrency network. Uh, Bloomberg aside, you know, first of all, Bloomberg, I mean, they need to get their analysts a little bit more in check. I'm pretty sure that the announcement of the JP Morgan coin, I uh, love how it says LOL here, uh, the JP Morgan coin uh, did would would not logically give a boost to Bitcoin's price. It is illogical that it would do that, especially if uh, the JP Morgan coin is supposed to be um, an adversary to Bitcoin, which it actually is and is not. Uh, this coin, the JP Morgan coin, is actually a stable coin, and it's going to be used e eternally, internally, not actually, you know, we won't be able to buy it. It's going to be something that's going to be flowing through JP Morgan, so that is an entirely different thing. 
Part of my problem, and I meant to mention this a couple of days ago, didn't have the time. I think I was in transit. Uh, the hypocrisy of the cryptocurrency space is is very strong. I don't know how it got this way. I don't know if it'll ever change. I don't know if it's just how people are. Uh, when this coin was announced, I saw a, a very large amount of people who would consider themselves to be, um, I want to say crypto maximalist i want to say even 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 bitcoin maximalist streamist somewhere along those lines you know like you know that 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 fine line that's right there who were praising and talking about how they liked the release of the jp morgan coin and it wasn't because of what i said in another video i thought the release of this coin was an indication that the cryptocurrency space is evolving rather quickly and jp morgan felt like that they had to keep up with it they had to release something they had to release some type of a cryptocurrency to remain relevant in the space to be able to let people know same as i think like in 2017 and 18 where everyone was adding blockchain to their name i feel like jp morgan chase released their own coin to kind of say yeah we're still cool we're, we're we're all still young we're all still hip we have a lot of money and we know what cryptocurrencies is and are blah 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 blah, blah. uh but a lot of people uh were talking were praising this coin uh and even talking about trying to not fund it like i i can't find the words in my head but they were pretty much talking about that they liked this coin a lot more than xrp and i sat there and i was like you like a coin that's made specifically for banks as opposed to a coin that can actually be used by other people around the world that has donated millions to people and organizations uh that are in need are in help that are you know um i don't know like I said, I, I'm not going to get too deep in it because I think it'll just be another video of me like ranting and being not angry, but you've you've heard my other videos. I'm not exactly sure. I, I, I think so many people in the cryptocurrency space are incredibly childish. I don't think that's ever going to, you know, if you if, if you're going to grow up, you're going to grow up. Uh, no one can help you do that except for your own uh, life and mentality and how you actually are as a person. Uh, but when I saw that, I I had friends who were sending me these articles as well. They were they were prominent Bitcoin people who were talking about how much that they uh, liked the idea of the JP Morgan coin and how this could definitely be something that would you know destroy XRP. And it only comes down to once again uh, people being afraid. We ha we have adults who are afraid of a cryptocurrency token uh, destroying the idea of what they think should be the only money in the entire world. Um, yeah, like I said, not going to spend too much time on the topic, uh, but I, I mean, there's I don't understand why there's so much fuss around things in the cryptocurrency space that don't actually matter. Like JP Morgan coin, while interesting that they released one because it's clear, 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 clear that they needed to release something to be like JP Morgan was never, ever, ever, ever. Imagine, imagine 10 years ago, Bitcoin was never made. We never had a Bitcoin. Do you really think in 2019, February 22nd, that we would have had news from JP Morgan creating a coin? They clearly did this to let other people know, hey, we're also in the game. We also know what, like I said that they are you know young and hip and cool and they are trying to keep up with the times we would never and i think it's so interesting i had another conversation with someone else and i said if we had never ever 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 had bitcoin if we never had litecoin if we never had xrp any of these cryptocurrencies none of these had been created our banks would still be as slow our banks would probably be even worse they would have higher fees they would have all these other things that were i don't know if you guys remember there was something a couple months ago where people were there, there was some bank in the states that was charging people to take their money um, I think every time you used your money, like actually paid for something, you got like a, a little surcharge. And every time that you took your money out of an ATM, you got charged. And I don't mean like the ATMs that already pre-charge you like four ninety nine. I mean, like you were getting charged money every time you took your money out of even their own ATMs, like from your bank branch. Uh, so I don't know. I'm rambling on. It's, it's, it's all kind of annoying. Uh, we would, we would, this is why I find it so ridiculous that so many people are like yeah you know banks are fast and now yeah so and so like, my bank has has blockchain my bank we, we we would not have any of these banks don't actually care about you they don't care anything about you they only want your money uh there's a reason why there's so many banks now who are like bragging that they have like same day transfers or you get your transfer within 24 hours and it's like wow you did something that you should have been doing about 20 years ago you know when it's whatever it's all very uh, frustrating. I, I I don't know. I I think it comes down to my want of how do I say this? I I know that crypto is going to succeed. I kind of just needed to get there ready because I'm. T 
tired of the the back and forth. When 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 the market does go back up, it's going to be a very exciting time, not because the prices are going up, uh, but because we're finally going to see who the the winners in this big game are. I think I'm just very impatient when it comes to all of these things. But yeah, I'm done rambling. Let's move on. To kind of finish things off, uh, this is also quite interesting. Vladimir von der Lahn, amazing, the lead maintainer of Bitcoin's most widely used software, has harsh words for those engaged in an ongoing debate about whether the cryptocurrency's finite supply, that is Bitcoin, will ever be increased. A soft-spoken developer from the Netherlands, van der Lahn, is usually hesitant to enter the fray, yet he has responded fiercely to the idea on Twitter last week specifically responding to the allegations that Bitcoin's developer team was planning to increase the the the, plot, the 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 supply the supply he declared this is bs it does it's sad and this needs to be said no one in their right mind proposes changing bitcoin's monetary policy despite the fact that the software is programmed to issue 21 million bitcoin an aspect of the code that wouldn't require everyone running the bitcoin software updates to change that hasn't stopped speculation over the years that an adjustment might be needed most recently, developer Matt Huang floated the idea of increasing the supply of Bitcoin in circulation very informally, just as a possible way to reduce future fees. The comments were later inflamed by a misunderstanding sparked by a social, single social media post from Bitcoin's annual Satoshi Roundtable event and an invite-only conference where CEOs, socialites, and developers gather and discuss the future of the cryptocurrency. Adding to the confusion, Jiang Tsuar, CEO of Bitcoin mining pool BTC Top, inaccurately argued on Chinese microblogging site Weibo that developers have been planning to increase the supply. I, 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 I really just don't know. Like, so much of this is, first of all, this is never going to happen. If you understand what Bitcoin is, if you understand the money that is in Bitcoin, if you have ever paid attention to any other hard fork, that has happened. You've seen that whenever Bitcoin gets split in half or another one gets created, the price of Bitcoin goes down. If you've ever watched any meetings or chattings, that's not a thing, you know, where discussions by the people from Blockstream or any of the Bitcoin developers, they are never, ever ever going to increase a Bitcoin supply more than 21 million ever. It is never, ever going to happen. This is why it's it's such a huge fuss whenever there is a fork and someone forks off the other dead chain to continue creating their own cryptocurrency. It's because Bitcoin is supposed to always be 21 million forever and is always going to be 21 million forever. And this is why we have the discussion of the possibility of someone trying to execute a 51% attack and them simply either stealing money or creating one additional coin it's, it's very unlikely now with how large that Bitcoin has become. The point is, uh, this is a topic of discussion because it's never going to happen. I saw this happen a couple days ago and I thought it was a joke and I scrolled over it, uh, realizing it wasn't April 1st and that it's weird that we can have people who are like coders and developers think that the, that the people who control the Bitcoin code would create additional Bitcoin. It's completely nonsensical, especially when we know that Bitcoin can be divided by at least eight decimals. And there have been discussions before about increasing uh, the, the further decimal places. Should we get into that situation? Should we get into that situation where Bitcoin is worth $100 million? One Satoshi is then worth one US dollar. So if you wanted to buy something that was cheaper than that, we would need additional decimal places. That's kind of the only like crazy discussion that I've really seen. Uh, the like I said, it was it, it, it was going to be a a very weird news day. I don't I don't understand what's happening within the cryptocurrency space. I don't understand why people don't know these logical things. Like it's like it's like knowing that Bitcoin runs on a blockchain, and someone's like, well, maybe we should take it off of a blockchain. Like it's just these these really weird discussions that people are happening. Uh, Bitcoin's not going to increase its supply. Uh, XRP is not going, you cannot create more XRP. That's not how it works. XRP are burned during every transaction. Litecoin is not going to have more than 84 million coins. Ethereum at the moment is still, uh, limitless in its amount of coins that are ever going to be created, but it's been discussed before that they're also going to think about having a finite supply as well. Not sure who these people are uh, creating these discussions and or these conversations that they think that these things are going to happen in the cryptocurrency space. They are not. Just let me clarify that to you one more time. 
to kind of finish things off, um, prices are going sideways. I keep seeing like little dips up. I guess maybe it's not a dip if it's going up. Uh, but we are once again very, we're touching the surface, scratching it of $4,000 a coin. I was hoping by the end of this week we got to 42, 4,300. I mean, this is, this is better than 1,200, so I can't really complain at all. Uh, yeah, I think that is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be in this crazy world. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. I do appreciate it. And as always, a very, very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Jared Schneider, Jim Gardner, singer, songwriter, Mike Savitz, Nick Kanaya, Anthony Charles, Yasha Harari, Gordon Nickick, Travis Haynes, Nick Mangialavori, Professor Wally from Gun Bot University, Arthur Yaku, L. Doug, Brady Niels, Rai Rai, Gil Boa Snake, and Vlad the Impaler. Thank you all very much for your generosity. I do appreciate it more than you could possibly begin to imagine. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. S See you.